So it's day four of this off-grid solar install here in the beautiful mountains. And uh, we got trucks and equipment everywhere. We got Copperhead Electric out here. We got Brian Rogers in the excavator. I gotta go down here and check on these guys. Wire in the array, make sure they're they're doing right by me. Just playing. I know what Scott. So Brian's fixing this road for uh, the homeowner. It was real steep, so he's just making it really nice. Go down here and see what we got going on down by the solar array. These, these gringos down here. Hey, what are you doing? Check out my gringos down here. Ooh, it's still steep hill. He didn't fix this part yet. I thought Brian was going to run the de-steepifier on this thing. I don't know what we're doing out here. Hey, boss. Hey, how you doing? Harbor Freight at its best. Knocking stuff out, right. tearing stuff up. Absolutely. How Look you doing? That. that looks nice. Did y'all do any leapfrogging? Too right. scared to leapfrog, huh? You can't. You can't with sports not landscape. With, not with landscape like this. Uh. I tried to think about it. I knew you would try. Well, Copperhead's just tearing it up up there. Is he? He's just tearing it up. Did you let him go? I'm going to let you make this call. He on. eats electrical fittings. You just throw them at him. He's like that hungry hippo game. <laughs> huh? So the gringos, the gringos are doing a great job down there. And I'm heading back up. They call me the goat. Heading back up to Steep Hill. Chris is down there right now, just going over it with the customer, explaining to him how these battery systems work. These systems can be, they can be complex, and we find that a lot of time we have to explain to our customers multiple times how the systems work, but that's part of the job, and we take the time to explain it to them, and then what we usually do is make a video and um, give that to them so they can log on watch the video over and over again of us explaining it helps our customers to understand what their systems are doing i'm really happy with the way this system turned out super clean looking got the magnum 4448 pt100 4.56 kw solar array my battery box in here just just humming away the vent fan is uh working real nice Looking good. Looking real good in there. So, love putting these systems in. We've done so many of them now that we really feel like we got them down. Magna makes a great inverter. So, one of my favorite things about this power track is it's been running for about three hours now and it is just barely warm to the touch. It's just got all these vents, and um, it's got big fans on it, but you just really don't hear it. I haven't heard the fan run on this thing, and uh, some of those other charge controllers out there, you really hear that fan spinning. I mean, it's just all the time. They get pretty warm. Uh, this one does not get near as warm. Now, this is a 100 amp charge controller, so it can handle about 6,600 watts, which your Midnight Classic and your classic 150s and your classic 200s, they're, you know, 5,000 and 4,000 watts, about the max power they can handle. Uh, so this, in, this this charge controller handles a lot more power, and I guess that, I just don't have it loaded up very hard. It's got about 1.1 kW going through it right now. And uh, that's all they're using in the house, so it's just supplying what they need. But I really like how cool this charge controller stays, and I also like the way it looks. So the solar array is located down the hill. Pipe comes down off uh, the solar array, goes into, or the power comes from the panels into the combiner box on the solar array. Goes up the hill. This pipe, this is the conduit for the solar. Comes in to this disconnect. This is the DC disconnect for the solar. It is uh, turning the solar on and off before it goes into the house. The next box over is an AC disconnect 
with a dedicated loads secure load sub panel. This AC disconnect is between the secure load sub panel and the output of the magnum inverter. So when the magnum inverter is running, it's putting power through this switch. Or if the grid is passing through the magnum inverter, the power is coming through this switch. So anytime somebody wants to work in that sub panel, they need to go ahead and just turn it off right here. This will turn off the secure load sub panel. We also put this disconnect here because if a firefighter comes and they want to pull power, pull the meter and cut power from the house, they also need to know that they need to turn this off because this is the disconnect for the backup power system. That's my temporary label right there. I've got a better label coming that really explains all that. This is a super sweet little disc uh, generator switch. This is, we used to use a transfer switch and a power inlet box, but now we've got something that's a combination of the two. Uh, this is a selector that selects between what, what is feeding power to the Magnum's input. So the Magnum is an inverter charger. It can, it can pull power off the grid to charge the batteries. It can also just pass the power through to the dedicated load sub panel. So this is where you plug the switch. You plug this right here into a generator, and you would take the switch, switch it to generator, and all of a sudden, instead of having power go to the magnum from the grid, the power would be going to the magnum from the generator. So we tried not to butcher the electrical panels. He had uh, these are the original 200 amp panels that were in the house. Uh, what we did is we took 30 amps off of this panel and we are feeding it uh, up to the magnum inverter in the garage and then back down into the dedicated loads panel. This is the secure load panel. So this will be for a well pump and then he's got all his critical loads in here. We went ahead and used a 200 amp panel because it fits nicely in here, but this, this panel is only really energized by 30 amps from the magnum inverter. And... Um, like I showed you on the outside, that middle disconnect turns power off to this panel. And then that uh, generator in and out, the generator uh, transfer switch plug, that's where the power is feeding into it from the grid. So if you wanted to kill power, you could you can kill power at a lot of spots here. So this is a uh, really clean install. We we're happy with the way it turned out. This is the pipe bringing power. Uh, it's going down into a gutter down there, and then it's bringing power up into the garage. It'll take you to the garage and the solar array too. So this right here is a real live Magnum, running just as hot as she can go. Uh, now she's not running too hot, but uh, what we got here is we got a PT100 power track. This is the charge controller. Uh, this is taking the power from the solar array and charging the batteries. And I've pressed the select button. You can see uh, what it's doing, given to the battery bank and volts and amps. And if you take the, uh, you can see what it's doing to the PV array, volts, and KW. So it's this. This is a morning array, and we're getting towards the end of the afternoon, and so we're not, we're not making a ton of power anymore. But he is keeping the battery full and powering the loads in the house. If you hold down both of these buttons at the same time, you will cause the power track to go into an equalize. Um, this is the MMP panel for the inverter. Most of the time I have my controller here, but the controller is in, in the uh, laundry room for this customer. This is the 175 amp uh, breaker between the magnum and the battery bank. This brings all the power from the batteries into this uh, enclosure. This 100 amp double breaker is the output from this charge controller to the battery. There was a surge. Look at that. She jumped up to 2.2 kW. We like to see that. We love to see that. Um, this is the 63 amp PV input breaker. This is the breaker between the solar and this charge controller. This 2 amp breaker is the battery monitoring kit breaker. I like to be able to turn it on and off so that I can reset the battery monitoring kit. I tell all my customers that uh, after you equalize your batteries, you're going to want to Oh, she's vacuuming in there. Listen to it. Mm -hmm. And after you uh, equalize your batteries or just periodically, you want to reset your battery monitoring kit and clear it out so that it can reestablish what the, the new uh, what the new normal is. This is I, I compare this to the miles per gallon 
instantaneous and the miles per gallon cumulative that you get in your cars now. A lot of your cars, you'll see how many miles per gallon you have. You're, you've been averaging over since the last time you reset it, and then you'll see how many miles per gallon you're averaging instantaneously. So if you don't reset this, it can, it can, you know, go over. Look at that, three. Now it's up to three kW. Nice. So you need to uh, just reset this battery monitoring kit every now and then. This 30 amp breaker is the AC input breaker. This is where the grid power or the generator is coming in. So when I showed you that transfer switch combination uh, power inlet down there at the uh, on the sidewall, the exterior of the house where the generator plug is, this is the other end of the wires coming out of that. So either the generator comes in or the grid comes in right there. Um, and then these two, uh, these two breakers that are interlocked, this is the output of the inverter, which is up in the normal operation, switch on for normal operation, and then it's the inverter AC bypass is down. Um, if you want to disconnect AC, obviously you just switch them both off, and this is, this is, what, this is the, the breaker set that is controlling the power that is going to the dedicated loads sub-panel. So I call this the party breaker. If you're having a party and you want to make sure that your system's not going to you know, trip out or your neighbors are going to come and run all their hair dryers and their blenders and their toasters and plug in their cheese, hamburger cheese fondue pots or whatever those, that's a big fan. Uh, you just take this breaker, flip that to the up position, the inverter is bypassed, you got 30 amps going straight through, you don't have to worry about popping a breaker. Um, one of the other things that I always like to show my customers, these are also circuit breakers. So these are input, this is overcurrent protection from this uh, inverter. So in, in addition to this 30 amp breaker, you have two 30 amp push button breakers right here. So we have seen these be popped before and uh, the customer not see any other pop breakers but, see the, but not see these and we have to come out there and push these back in. So these, these, uh, generally these will pop first if you pull more than 30 amps through the Magnum for you know, long enough to pop, pop it. They won't pop instantaneously, there's a little bit of a delay. These fancy suckers right here, these are lightning arresters. And um, these just, they're, they're gonna protect the system from surges from lightning. And then right here, I have my battery bank. Uh, I always put it in a nice little deck box. People ask me where they get them. Where I get them, I'm, they're custom made for gain solar. I get them custom, big time. Um, so there's our L16 battery bank. These batteries are, they're the Crown uh, 6CRP-525 RE series battery. The water miser caps, we'll take the water miser caps off and change it out for a watering kit. We're still waiting on that to come in. Um, this, this battery bank is about 400 amp hours at a 20 hour rate, something like 525 amp hours at a 100 hour rate. And um, this is where you can add water if you want, these water recombiner caps. Uh, this is also where you can check specific gravities. And then this is our battery vent fan that we have dialed in to run anytime the battery is above 46 volts. So, and this is the power wire going to it that we have taped around uh, running the uh, battery vent fan. So, I'll take you down to the solar array next and show you what we got down there. There's our controller showing how much power we're making. It's a little bit cloudy outside right now, but. Still run it, we're running, she's vacuuming in there, she's giving it all it's got. And uh, I'll show you what the load amps for that vacuum is. 14 amp load, pulling 16 amps off the bat battery, and then the, there's the charge controller pushing in 1100 watts. So when she gets done running that vacuum, the charge controller will fill that battery bank right up. So right now the PT100 is making all the power it can to power that vacuum. And then um, they're also pulling some off the battery. So right now, 37 amps being pulled off the battery. And um, if I go look at what's going across the BMK, it's only 17 amps because out of that 37 amp DC load, the uh, the power track is also making power track's making about half of that. So very cool, very cool to see your solar work. We love watching our systems work. So this, this job is on the side of a mountain, and um, I always have little things that I worry about on my jobs. I love to worry about my jobs. On this job, one of the biggest worries was the access. When we were out here, uh, we had our, 
our digger, Mr. Brian Rogers, he he actually did such a good job. He was, the customer hired him afterwards to come back another day and uh, do some more digging for him. So what, one of the things we did is we straightened this road out. This road was pretty bad. And uh, Mr. Brian on his Mini X, he made short work of that. But now I'm gonna walk you down here to the solar array. This is the famous hill that Scott drove his ATV up. He drove his Honda four tracks up here about 35,000 times and he hauled about 80 bags of concrete. So coming down here to the solar array, I'll show you what we did down here. Uh, one of the biggest concerns that I had with this installation was this hill. Uh, I originally told the customer that I didn't think that we should put it on the hill. I wanted to put it on the roof, but the customer did want, not want a roof-mounted solar array. So this guy right here, Mr. Chris Gray, do you, is it okay if I say your name on camera? <laughs> he, he made the call that we could, we could indeed do this. We did have the technology. And uh, Brian came out here and really dug it out good. So we flattened out a spot for our solar array. And I, it made all the difference in the world on, when we were working, and it also ended up looking really good. Did a little landscape in here on the side just to keep the erosion down and make it look good. And uh, this solar array, oh, and then we, Brian also moved a bunch of logs. So this solar array is uh, Solar World 285s. There's 16 of them. It's 4.56 kW. It's mounted on the Iron Ridge ground mount system with three inch schedule 40 pipe got the new ufos iron ridge's new claim to fame uh, the three inch pipe is beefy and then here's the underneath of the array see how it was just very artfully artfully dressed jump no it doesn't, it doesn't move does it? no it's this is a sturdy way to build a ground mount for sure so a lot of concrete in those holes. Those posts are down about five feet, six feet. And uh, she's artfully wired with care, the utmost care. This is our combiner box. This is where each, each uh, the panels are wired in strings of four. So each group of panels, four panels in series, coming into this combiner box. They're going into 15 amp breakers and getting combined. And then it's all going back on this wire and. There's a number four wire taking it back to the house. So, once again, I'm really happy with the way this thing turned out. See, that was a challenging hill for sure. So, uh, this has been the tour.